During the move, I misplaced the power supply that I made for my vibratory sand table. So what I'll do instead of paying like a hundred bucks, it's a hundred volt DC motor. So that power supply, if I were just to buy it, would be a little expensive. I don't want to dig around to try to find it in the storage unit or wherever it is. So I'm just going to make a fluidizing bed. I'm going to take uh, recycle this kerosene injector burner from my old way back. You might remember I used to use a kerosene foundry. This is the nozzle burner. So I'm going to repurpose some of these parts for a fluidizing bed. This will inject air into the sand and help it kind of agitate and form around the part. Uh, this is more like what a commercial lost foam foundry would use uh, to get the patterns embedded in the sand. I've got this scrap block of brass. It's a manifold from some type of automotive test equipment. At any rate, it has the same threads as this compression fitting from the old kerosene injector. So I'm pretty much just going to cut off a corner and that way I can drill a hole that I can just solder in the copper tubing into. I hammered out flat spots so that I could drill holes around the little ring that I'll put at the bottom of the flask. I just used a propane torch to heat up the brass and copper and some solder. I really was probably using the wrong type of solder, but I had quick access to it and this is really just an experiment. When I originally cast these bosses for the yoke mount and the shaper, I went ahead and drilled them to, I think this is 12 millimeters, but a 12 millimeter drill bit in a material like bronze was leaving a hole less than 12 millimeters so I could bore it out. This hole, however, is enough over 12 millimeters that it's, it's just a little too, just a little too sloppy. So I'm going to go back and recast these and then this time I'll use like an 11 and a half millimeter drill bit to drill it and then bore it out. My fresh bag of dry play sand put off a lot of silica dust. Silica! And that silica is not something I want to breathe. I suspected that the fluidizing bed would create a lot of airborne silica dust. So I felt like a mask was definitely in order. I think I'm using a P100 filter, but a P95 would be probably fine. The fluidizing bed seems to work okay, but it's quite a bit more messy and cumbersome than the vibratory table. So I'll probably switch back to the vibratory table when I find that power supply. In the meantime, I've got a way to embed my polystyrene patterns into the sand and make loss foam castings to keep the Shaper Project going. Check out the full Shaper Project video playlist if you haven't already, and thanks for watching.